This level makes me want to blast Bon Jovi, Van Halen, and Kiss songs over and over and over again. Not all at once. Well, we could have done that, but we're partners now, so we have to take it easy with that stuff. <laughs> so we'll sing it ourselves. Whoa! <laughs> nah, who cares? <laughs> Unfortunately, there isn't much, you know, rock music that's, you know... Uh, what do you call it when it's not copyrighted anymore? Uh, public domain? That, yes. Public domain. What's a public domain rock song? Something that you can torrent legally. I'm sure there are some Elvis <laughs> songs. That are, I'm sure there are a few Elvis no. songs that are probably. No, they probably have the rights to Elvis locked down pretty hard, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Ah, oh, missed. I missed Gurren Lagan Kirby. Damn it. Yeah, we'll see him later because he's required for a part. Two, actually. Ah. But yeah, we will see him. Anyway, you need a uh, single rock Kirby if you want to get the one of the crystal shards in this area without uh, backtracking. So I'm going to need to stick with single rock for a little while anyway. Why only single rock? Because well, one of the parts we need requires a combination with rock and a different power-up, uh, electricity. So I'm going to ah. need to just stick with single until I get to the electrical enemy in this area. Are you, in, uh, are you invulnerable while using rock? Uh, yes, but I you run very, very slowly, and it does wear off after a while. No, it doesn't wear off, but you can't jump, and you move really slow, so... you I generally just use it when I'm about to run into something, and then break it immediately to keep up the pace. And he doesn't turn into different forms, like Superstar. Uh, one of the power-up abilities let him do that. Do that. Yeah, but Rock Kirby and Superstar can do it naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Losing your touch, Kirby. <laughs> it's almost as if his Hal doesn't give a crap about you anymore. Well, no, Hal gives a crap enough at, to make a decent collection at, at, the, at, at, at this point of Kirby's lifespan. Because, <laughs> I mean, what, what do we get after Kirby 64? <laughs> uh, oh, <yeah. laughs> I see what you quack, did there. Quack, 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 There's quack, a reason quack, I called quack, it Kirby quack, 64 quack, Zone. Quack, 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 wrong, quack, quack, wrong quack, act quack. music. I'm gonna get nitpicky here. <laughs> I think that act's funnier. <laughs> so, yeah. I was not expecting to hear the disco duck after. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying... Well, after your, as for your question, I think 2001 and 2 we got uh, Nightmare and Dreamlands. Uh, there was Kirby Air Ride and Amazing Mirror right after that. Uh, Kirby gets a pretty steady release schedule, you know? Not one every year, but every two or <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, Kirby mostly stuck to handhelds uh, between yeah. like 2000 and 2012, and mm -hmm. it wasn't until... Turn to Epic, Dreamland. Epic Yard, I think yeah. it was? Yeah, Epic yeah. Yard. Hell, only... Wrecking Ball Kirby, awesome. Yeah, um... Uh, Epic Yarn was the first console game since this, not including um, Air Ride. Air Ride, which is a decent racer, but not a, a spectacular one. To be to be entirely truthful about it, Epic Yarn doesn't play much like a Kirby game. Epic Yarn Epic is Yarn's boring. boring. Apart from the um, the incredibly easy and bland level designs, it doesn't play much like a Kirby game. It's fucking boring as I like, hell. I like the art design, but that's it, about I heard it. It wasn't even originally supposed to be a Kirby game. No, the other guy, Prince Fluff, was supposed to be the main character, but Hal just made it Kirby so it would sell more copies. They, I, I heard their logic was basically hell. He looks like Kirby anyway. Let's just make it a Kirby game. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Fluff. Basically, mm, that sounds an awful like uh, like a different game that ended up being mediocre. Cough, Star Fox, Fox Adventures. Adventures. <laughs> Huh. You know, for a second I thought you were talking about Devil May Cry 2, which was also supposed to be a game about the side character that got stuck in the sidekick role. That seems to happen a lot in video games. In the well, game I mean, in the end, look at Devil May Cry's perspective. You got, you got a sequel game, and you already want to shift a focus to a side character. We didn't have enough time with Dante yet. No, um, I'm, I think what happened with Devil May Cry 2 was they were designing an entirely different game around Lucia, and at some point, someone in charge said, you know what, we want this game to sell more copies, put Dante in it. And it sort of became the sequel, somehow. Meh. Which would certainly explain how it, how it came out so half-assed. 
But back to what's going on on screen. We are in Lagan Kirby. <laughs> huh? This is actually oh, one of the. His drill is a right. His drill is a drill that will pierce the heavens. <laughs> no, he can't because he's not going up. He's going left. It All could right. pierce the heavens, but he's too lazy to go that far. So he's just going to pierce the layer of air two feet above the ground. It's one of the better powers in the game, just because it's a <laughs> steady projectile. Ouch. I'm dead. Oh yeah, this is not my best playthrough. I, I noticed I, you I, actually I, died. <laughs> I do terrible this run. Like, legitimately, completely, unforgivably awful. So, getting that out of the way right now. That's not Damn going it. to stop us from making fun of you for it. I know. I just figured I'd get it out of the way now so we're not bringing it up at part four. Oh, we're six. gonna be bringing it up still. <laughs> True. If it's spectacularly abysmal, then we'll bring it up, sure. Could it possibly be any worse than Ryan's Sonic 3 and Knuckles run? Oh. <laughs> um. I don't know. Oh, you're not, you have to think about it? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> suddenly I'm very afraid. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to think. I think there's less of an excuse to suck here than in Kirby than in uh, Sonic 3. So, I'm trying to think from uh, I'm trying to think on like a proportional scale where this would fall. Let's just well, say it's, let's just way. let's just say it's worse and be done with it. It's harder. It, it's harder for me to distinguish whether or not you're playing horribly or not because I'm I'm not a Kirby aficionado and well, Kirby games you know, are with with their ex one exception per game that's brutally difficult. They're normally very easy games. <laughs> Yeah, because to this day, I've only beaten Dreamland 1 for the Game Boy and Adventure. Um, this game, I think, is a little bit harder than normal, just well, because it, you don't you going get to for... fly infinitely. Yeah. And, and there's an awful lot more backtracking involved, since you need certain powers for certain rooms. Well, that's only but, if you're going for 100%, but... Well, if you go don't go for 100%, the ending you get sucks. So there's real, and it's not hard enough to the point where you shouldn't go for a hundred percent. I guess. Mm -hmm. Anyway, these pillars jump up if you touch them, and crushing is instant death, so don't do that. What the hell is this slime Why from is Dragon War? Dragon Quest. Death? Uh, crushing is instant death because crushing is always instant death. But Kirby ducks by flattening himself. He's not paper thin. You're going after one star, really? Yes, I am. Oh, Kirby like a... ducks by flattening himself. He it should be a... able to survive that, damn it. A slime from Dragon Quest. It does look like one of those. Sword and shield. It's yeah. only got one eye, though, but it's a little bit harder to see with the Don't perspective we've got. It. For a second, I thought we were about to see another Kirby death. It's a little bit... It's easier to get crushed by those than you'd think, so I'd recommend not even stepping on them to begin with. Mm-hmm. I love those little, little ghost things that you just stepped on. It's like their attack is that they just saw something shocking. <laughs> that thing <gasps> was, <laughs> looked like a chow with a helicopter propeller on its head. Oh, you missed. <laughs> Aww, we almost, we almost got to see my favorite power in the game. Oh, well, we'll see it later. You see it next part, but still. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't, I didn't take the opportunity to get my second favorite power in the game right there either. Double electric. Uh, no, fire electric. All oh, right. Well, I meant uh, fire my. Electric. So this particular Kirby is it Blanca Kirby or what? Uh, what fire electric? You'll you'll see. I get no. that later on too. Oh oh oh. Um, cutter electric. Oh, we'll see that next part, and I don't want to ruin the surprise. I was just talking about the the the, the electrified one you were just using. Oh, that's a spark Kirby. Spark. Yeah, oh. he was he was he was pulling a Blanca. He was totally pulling a Blanca right there. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Nope, nope. So we have Falcon Punch Kirby, we have Blanca Kirby. Uh, does Kirby have a Hadouken in this game? No, uh, he, there's no a fighter. Sonic Boom, maybe? There's no fighter Kirby in this game. Well, I would count the Boomerang as a Sonic Boom. Uh, wait, uh, until, wait until Return to Dreamland where Fighter Kirby pretty much is Ryu. <laughs> He even has, if you do the Hadouken motion, you even do a Hadouken. If you do the Shoryuken <laughs> motion, he does a Shoryuken and he has the drop kick. He pretty does much he have the hurricane kick? I don't think he has the hurricane kick, but he pretty much fights like Ryu does. Pretty much, yes. 
Anyway, the way to the right up there is the way we're supposed to go, but there's a shard in the, the maze, so we have to get it. Yep. DDD ah. controls pretty much like Kirby. Uh, you can't fly, but you get a hammer attack. And you can break. You use them to break down certain walls. Uh, somehow, somehow this is giving me flashbacks to Crash Twin Sanity. Those little bits and pieces of the game where you'd switch to uh, Cortex for a bit. Um, so we're this... GDD Kirby. <laughs> I want to clobber that there me. <laughs> uh, these sections I actually think are kind of a missed opportunity because there's potential for these to be really cool and interesting, but they're very basic and they don't do enough to differentiate the, your, the, themselves other than being a nice brief change of pace. Because mm -hmm. that was it. You only ever get a control DDD for one room. Hey, got the one up. Yeah. Ooh. Normally I'd say you don't need that in a Kirby game, but you proved us wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I did better than you would. No, anyway, you didn't. Whatever. I've never... I've never played a Kirby game seriously before, but even so, I would do better than you're doing at this game right now. Anything you can do, I can do better. Anyway, uh, you're going to need rock for this section, so off screen I just went and got that. I did a lot of editing to make sure that this uh, played smoothly, because if I didn't edit, this playthrough would be more like four hours instead of the two that it ended up being. Oh god, the Lion King. I'm sorry, I just had a terrible, terrible flashback from my childhood. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> the elephant graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is the nostalgia pit, Lewis. You must promise never to go there. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh no, you bought Sonic 4, didn't you? No, I still no, I still prefer the pig that says it's 4chan. <laughs> <laughs> What's that black void over there, Dad? That place is called 4chan, son. You must never go there. <laughs> uh, in that room we were in before, uh, you could go either down the left pit or the right pit. The left pit takes you to the crystal shard, so you're going to need to go down that one if you don't want to play through the level again. See, we end up in the background instead of the foreground due to the, which uh, place we went into. So I can't just turn around you done goofed. <laughs> so you done goofed? No, uh, he got if you it. went down the right one, yes. But he got the crystal shard, so. Oh, I Problem see. with two point five D perspectives. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. they just piss you off. Like, why can't I just turn around and go, you know, in three D? I'm surprised. Why can't, why can't I use my fluttering flying ability to just, you know, jump from one bridge to the other? Because Hal's afraid of taking th Kirby into a full three D perspective. Ooh. Ser seriously, there's no reason for them not to do it at this point. To be fair, the flight mechanic would be irritating to control in 3D. Ice skater it Kirby. <laughs> Wee. This, I think this makes you move a little bit faster, but it's kind of hard to control. kill things with it. Yeah. He runs. Why he would you, uh, uh, a question here. Why would you think the flight mechanic would be difficult to handle in 3D? I could, I could see them uh, messing it up pretty easily if they didn't well, do it. I don't know. I mean, how do you mess up a simple jump and jump again to go higher? Well, I mean, you'd have to people. Well, you'd have to first off, you would have to put a limit on how much you could fly, like they do in this game. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, um, I'm not sure how they would uh, be able to handle it, though. I mean, you can sort of control Kirby in 3D in one of the modes in Air Ride. Because you get off the the board for a little bit and find a different one, you can fly for a little while. It controls okay, at least but not give it a, At least give it a shot. I think that that was during the GameCube era. Yeah, where during Kirby the GameCube, there was one shown a number of times, but it never got released. And yeah. now we are playing Donkey Kong Country's water levels. Fantastic. This is actually this is a little bit shorter than uh, Donkey Kong Country, though. Just this, as bland, though. Yeah. This, yeah, there's a current. What you can't see is that there is a current going down. So uh, you are I being got that from the bubbles. Well, it, it was it was in effect before the bubbles really started to pile up on screen. I'm sorry. I know that was important, but are those bits and pieces of something's spine dropping down at us? Sure. Well, knowing how creepy the Kirby series can get when you start to think about it, I'd I'd assume so. Yes. I mean, we saw the skeleton of a dinosaur or whatever earlier, so it's probably the same sort of creatures that have okay. been making this entire area. Hell, half of Kirby is nightmare fuel. Yeah. Yeah. 
I missed a lot of Nintendo man. franchises that are way darker <laughs> when you start looking into it. Yes. But Kirby especially so, because it just gets downright right nightmare-inducing half the time. Marks. <laughs> Do you think Kirby is the darkest franchise in Nintendo? No, well, it's I not think, the well, darkest. Not the but... Well, I mean, I think it's got some of the darkest elements, but overall I'd say Metroid or Zelda. Met Majora's Mask? <laughs> Whoa. You know, when a, when a 2.5D game takes a really, like, uh, slanted perspective like this, my my sense of control always feels off. It, it controls fine, because whether you press up or it, right, it you'll has, go in the same direction, so... It, it has it has very little to do with, with how well it controls, and more to do with my own sense of where things are. Well, yeah, it's not like you have to platform awkward there. awkward to me. Mm -hmm. It's not like you have the platform there, so it's not like the game's expecting you to do anything. Yeah, it just still feels weird. You, should, you see Kirby going in a diagonal perspective towards the like the black cube, What's and you're it, you're you're holding right, and you think you should be holding you know like northeast or northwest. Well, uh, somewhat uh, like somewhat unconsciously, I uh, usually hold up and right at the same time when I uh, play it, and you you still go right. So the game's program, the game took out the program where you press up to start flying, which I never really got anyway. Uh, but it it it, can tr it it takes the three two point five D into account when you're playing the game, or at least I think it does. So you need this power in order to get a crystal shard later on. So uh, you're just getting it now. <laughs> well, yeah, I can get it on the way, so I do get it on the way. It's light bulb, Kirby. Yeah. It's not very useful outside of this power uh, one instance. Though this was a this was a puzzle that always tricked me when I was a kid. It's like, how do I r light up this dark room? Oh wait. I so have just... an idea. <laughs> so you just need to memorize the uh, the three things and then press down on these squares in order to get the crystal shard. It's a fairly so simple puzzle. Why does, why does ducking while standing on the button press the button? Because that's why. It takes a lot of pressure for Kirby to fly it himself. <laughs> There's no real other way to do it because if you just step... Uh, I think they did it just because if you stepped on it by accident, you'd have to go back in and out of the room in order to reset. Hmm. Fair point. Look at all this geometry. Then 64. Look at that. Look at, look at that pointlessly floating cube over there. They've got tons of that in Return to Dreamland as well, though it's a little bit more. Um... Speaking of geometry, guess what's coming out this winter? Geometry Wars? No. <laughs> <laughs> geometry Battle. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It has it something to do. With, it has something to do with Sega, but it's not a Sonic game. Vector Man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Double Electric Kirby, or as I like to call him, Rave Kirby. I'm talking about Nights into Dreams. Damn it! I know. I was joking to piss you off. And it worked. <laughs> Now, I don't know why they don't just end the level right there, because this room isn't really that hard, and it's the only room left before the level's over. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I guess it gives you a few free uh, health items, well, we but... Just, we just experienced the rave, Kirby. Now it's time to, you know, take on the pole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh... Johnny, why do you have to put these sort of uh, ideas into my brain? <laughs> Wait, you're the one that's... You're the one Wait, that's... what sort of idea are we talking about here? Kirby at a pole. It's pole dancing. Pole dancing. Okay. stuff. I don't think Kirby has the physique to be a pole dancer, though. You know, he's already butt naked, so I don't think it makes a difference. <laughs> so, this boss is geometry yet again. Well, I don't know this boss is... The X4 chip. We've walked, I... into, we've walked into, like, a Tron movie or something. And... I don't know. All the threatening Tron villains were Does out. Does this thing have a name? I forget. It has a name. All of the enemies here have names. I don't remember what this one is, though. I always, this, I always call it the primary polygon. colors, Rompi. <laughs> this one is, this one is green polygon. These are his brother and sister, blue polygon and red polygon. I always call them the primary colors, Rompi. 
This is my least favorite boss in the game, if only because the intro to this boss just takes too long. It's not well, just a hey, green is a primary color outside of America. No, I think it I think red, blue, and yellow are considered primary because no two colors mixing makes them. I think it's just from a, a physics standpoint, red, green, and blue are the uh, primary colors or something like that. There's a difference between painting primary colors and uh, physics secondary, colors. Secondary colors. Oh. Huh. Now, there is a slight puzzle element to this boss where you see those little uh, floating things. If you spit the red one at the red uh, uh, enemy, it will do t take more damage. The green one at the green, etc. But it's a little bit more tedious to fight like that, so I usually just like to bring a power in anyway. I always thought that I always thought that primary colors thing was sort of like the difference between like our system and the metric system, etc. Just no. something that's different because no, it's just a paint thing versus a physics it's, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I primary understand. colors and the secondary colors that are a result of mixing one or two primary colors together. <laughs> anyway, this boss, work. this 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 boss is rather. I don't know. It's like, it's like I'm looking at a beta boss from Star Fox in the SNES, and it's like, you know what? I really liked how this game came out. We should this reuse it. This is a wireframe. It's what we make games out of these days. We Indeed. used to use sprites, but that's so old school now. I mean, I get what they were going for, but I just don't think it really worked all too well. I mean, it's not terrible to play through. It's just one of the lamer hey, ones. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, did, did that DDD and Waddle D were just sort of walking in place there? <laughs> oh god, the urges. <laughs> you don't know how hard it is for Kirby to avoid trying to eat all of them. That's that's rather <laughs> grim. It's a good thing we have Patrick Danville on our side who can just paint us some food. Yes, that paint is full of vitamins and minerals and um, potentially damaging lead. Yep. He was gonna eat all. Of course he was. Well, he already he already eats half of them anyway. <laughs> he okay. eats a while. He was deep. considering eating the two. Oh, that is that's dark. Johnny what? Kirby eats a waddle dee for breakfast every morning. <laughs> Why did we all plop down in the desert to eat our lunch before leaving the desert via space portal? Oh, because we don't know where that space portal is gonna take us. Hmm. 